Okay, um, I think we can probably get started. Um, so thanks everybody for joining today. Uh, this is a CNF working group. Uh, we meet weekly on Mondays at 1600 UTC. Um, so the link to the meeting minutes is in the chat. If you wanna add your name at the top, just so we can keep track of who's here, that'd be great. Um, before we jump in, is there anything that anyone wants to add to the agenda? Okay, hearing nothing, we'll just uh, dive right in. Um, so the first one is a idea that uh, Ian brought up in the Slack channel. Um, and basically uh, he would like to have some basic ground rules uh, for like pull requests. Uh, basically, um, rather than having things languish and kind of having some rules and if there's no major disagreements, um then we should be able to uh merge things obviously i think this will allow us to kind of move forwards faster and and make people uh feel like they can edit things because things will get uh, uh merged and approved so ian is there anything else you want to add to that um not particularly i don't think okay um I guess, does anybody have any thoughts on this or like ideas on how we could frame this maybe? Just some way of moving them forward so that they don't sit there for weeks. Yeah. There's a lot to, uh, yeah. We we did we have had a problem in the I want to say the tug group or some other groups where there were some rules definitions actually pushed through ran through really quickly uh, when there's like low attendance so I'd rather not do the like one or two weeks or something probably make use it as like a something that it's it's not caught in a, in a longer there's probably some other problem if we're not approving things within a month, let's say. Yeah, so I think the question is how long is a good idea? Um, the idea being that um, if you've got something worth committing, then, or, you know, that you're proposing to commit, uh, that it can always be edited after the fact. It, it, this, you know, to say that it's in the repository does not mean to say that it's part of anything we would necessarily release. But beyond a certain point, it becomes very difficult to kind of propose meaningful edits in a pull request it's easier to add a pull request on top of something that's already been committed than it is to eternally debate something in the pull request itself. And um, are you talking about, do we have a real example that we could look at? Are there ones that have zero approvals yet? No, we don't, um, but we don't have ones that are ever, we rarely have ones that are fully approved by every reviewer we've asked to look at it as well. So that I think is more the question. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, so that maybe that's something we could say, like it needs at least two approvers. Usually the list is just to get someone's attention that um, it, when we have eight people on, we're not saying we want all of them to approve. We want some number of them. And they're usually just here, some interested parties. So a minimum number. And I think that would address what you're saying, Watson, that we're not gonna let just anything through. But um, when there's only a, a small number of attendees, it could be- Yeah, quorum some type of quorum or something like that, maybe. Mm 
Yeah, I guess does anybody yeah, have any problem? Oh, go ahead. Well, I was going to say if the problem is if the problem is um, uh, things being hard to edit in uh, you know pull requests, then maybe it could be marked as draft or whatever as we edit it and we can approve it into a draft and it has draft as the name and then the final approval takes a draft out of the name What would determine when draft goes away or when it needs to have draft in its name? That would be a, the final pull request would be taking draft out the name. And then that at that point, we're getting into whatever democratic process or whatever it is that we're doing as far as saying, OK, it's accepted. Yeah, I guess I would be in favor of keeping things fairly lightweight rather than having a lot of rules and requirements on how and when pull requests can be merged. I think I agree with Ian, like we should have like some things that things don't just sit around forever, but I don't think we need to make it really laborious. Otherwise, I think it's gonna really slow down the work of the group. So regarding the previous point um, of the quorum, uh, once that we have defined the, the, the roles, I guess that we can use those roles as approvers, right? Um, yeah, yeah, I think that's probably one of the problems. Yeah, it's probably yeah, you problem. also end up in a situation where a so, small number of people is basically making this all the decisions. If you do it yep. that way. Yeah, I, I definitely want to keep it where the only thing with roles would be enough people from groups, but not the the tech leads and chairs are not final approvers on any of this. It's still community voting. Um. We could come up with some number and then shift it if it if it doesn't um, work. Like the chart charter updates probably should have more people, and then other things as they're coming in, adding use cases and and other things could probably have a, a smaller number. And then it, we can shift those if it if it doesn't feel like we have enough. Um, representation within the group. Yeah, um, maybe I can take a, a stab at a pull request around this um, by next week. And then we can kind of once maybe it'll be easier once we have like something uh, like a little bit more concrete. How would we approve your pull request? <laughs> also a good question. Uh, <laughs> How about just make it a proposal bill to talk about in the group? You don't have to put it. We can drop it in as a, a Google Doc or whatever to discuss, or a yeah. discussion. Actually, a GitHub discussion. Yeah, I mean, theoretically, we could just use the process laid out in the pull request to approve the pull request. Um, yeah, we're, we're, I mean, I'm being facetious, obviously, but I think yeah. that, 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 that trying to put it down in paper is probably the right answer. Because then yeah. we'll see whether in, it, once we've got the details and it's a document, it does actually look halfway plausible. Yeah. Okay. So, so I, I just want to point out, you know, uh, um, the GitHub repository, I hope we treat it as a living document. It's not necessarily, yeah. you know, if a pull request gets approved, it's not somebody's power play to define things for the whole group forever, right? Yeah, um, exactly. Okay, um, so is there anything that anyone else wants to add on that before we kind of move to the next topics? Because I, I think we could probably go on this topic for the rest of the meeting, but until I think we have something more concrete, I don't know if it'll be really productive. 
or as productive as going on to other topics. Bill, this is Oliver. I, have, I just have a quick comment and I would suggest we don't actually discuss it, but it, maybe it's something you can just kind of throw into your thinking um, if, you, if you try to put it in the temp. And that would just be around the point of, of reviewers and how those reviewers are selected. I mean, we, we have a list each week that everyone's signing up saying I was attending this meeting. I mean, perhaps there's a way that we can sort of you know, pull randomly from the, from the list of people who are attending to ask for reviews so that it's not always the same people. It might be, might be one way to just sort of just get, trigger the engagement from others. Okay, thanks. Um, great. Um, and so I think Ian, maybe the comment that led to this discussion was around like this pull request around enterprise VPN use cases, um, because it has been sitting here for uh, a little while. Uh, it, it, to be fair, it, it, it is, yeah, um, but it hasn't actually been sitting there that long. We've only discussed it once so far. So um, it, it's not it suddenly occurred to me that I didn't know what would make it move forward. And maybe we should answer that question before we get to something we agree less clearly on. But um, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's an example of something that eventually wants committing so that people can propose their own independent changes on it rather than again, fighting about it in its pull request. So. Yeah. So I don't know, do we want to dive into it now? Um, do people, have people had a time to look at it? Are, are there comments about this specific pull request uh, that Ian made now? And so for everyone that's not familiar with it, uh, Ian made it kind of like a first use case document um, and just wrote out uh, about a BGP on a customer network. I think this is an example of that type of uh, pull request that we were mentioning you know, almost should just get auto approved, right? It's, it can be edited later. Yeah. And it's just a, a working document. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I've been obviously keeping an eye on the discussion and it, it's another example of what I mean, uh, which is uh, actually it's been in there a little longer than I thought it had. It, it's got the comments on it are now 10 days old so it must have been in actually more than one week so my mistake on that but um i don't think there's a comment that anyone has put in there that desperately needs fixing at this point um there's been some useful discussion um i guess i've been arguing that it's good enough as it is um it's got a couple of approvals as well actually so it's not like it's getting any disagreement to speak of um I don't know what to do with the discussion that remains, you know, because there's been some useful points that came up in, in that um, uh, discussion, but uh, no particular actions proposed from them. So there's maybe, it's worth reviewing that to make sure there's not something we're missing. But aside from that, I mean, it's not getting dissent in any meaningful form. So what would make us want to commit it? I, um, this is Taylor. I'm personally okay with um, the use cases moving forward uh, quicker than, say, a best practice, which if we stamp, have a stamp of approval would affect RFPs, as you pointed out, Ian. Mm. So some of these things, I think when we get to the pull, um, pull request process, we can label, you know, charter would become a bigger deal. Like you said, this one doesn't have dissent. So that's probably the biggest thing on any pull request. Did we address all the items and, and probably go through? And if someone isn't available, like we waited on, I, I think Robbie for one on uh, a month or two ago, there was stuff waiting for people that had comments that we wanna be able to discuss in this call if, if it's not getting addressed would be good. The only thing on this particular uh, number 60 PR that I saw as you were scrolling by, Bill, was I think Victor is one or two up. Um, is that it? No. 
let's see. Oh, no, it was right below Victor's. I just saw it again. Go down a little bit. Maybe it was yours, Bill. Yeah. On the, was it the language terminology? Yeah. Uh, I added a section for that that you'll notice yeah. there's a bunch of commits. Oh, follow the tip. Yeah, right. he did. Um, Great. So, yeah, I, I, my, well, my comments well, all. But you're, you're, you're good then. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I'm happy. I think, I don't know, I, maybe I forgot to approve it after that. Okay, sorry, that's my fault. <laughs> Give it approval. And then there was, I saw a question mark in Victor's. Did that one get addressed? Um, I put a comment on there, which he's read. So I think he's read. Hang on, I need to check that. I think he's on the call. Victor's on the yeah, call. Yeah, I hear. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, I can probably, I can approve it because um, my point was regarding the multiplexers. So probably, um, but I open another discussion where we can uh, talk about what what is going to be or how looks like the Kubernetes-based deployment. If the Kubernetes-based deployment could be include those multiplexers, um, but that my point is, um, yeah, probably my discussion point is not going to be discussed here. So I guess the, the use case is fine. Let me just approve it. Yeah, one thing I'm asking myself, because I was writing a deployment use case out last night. Someone doesn't do his homework very early. I'm sorry about that. But uh, um, And that one, as I'm writing it, is ending up with a bunch of reasoning in about we should do it this way. And I don't like that very much. It should describe the problem, not the solution. This one, I think multiplexes are a potential solution for the problem that it highlights. Um, and that's the point you're making. Um, and I don't know where those proposed solutions go, because I think they're worth committing even if we don't accept them. I don't think they have to turn into a best practice, but I, because I think they want their discussion recording as we, you know, we do use multiplexes or we don't use multiplexes for these reasons. And there's no obvious place to put that stuff yet. So that might be a topic we want to talk about or add to the agenda. So let me do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Um, so unless there's any last um, raging dissents on this call, I think we can merge this pull request. Can you refresh, um, Bill? Yeah. So I think one of the things that you point out was uh, make sure and approve if you've gone through the discussion, use the PR um, approval process, click do the review and click approve um, at the top whenever you're interacting. And if you're adding comments um, about the, that's specific to the content in a PR, it makes it easier to do the review process and add comments there because it comes through as part of your, um, on, on that right with the reviewers, it'll show that you've done a review and you had some comments or potentially a request for changes. And then it'll be a lot easier to then go back and, and switch that to approved. Yep. So like, like Taylor did. <laughs> yeah, well, I think a lot of people have been doing that. Um, and then yeah. Once it's done, then Ian or whoever's on the pull request can mark those as approved yep. or resolved, and, and then we know it's completed at the end. Yep. Any objections okay. to merging that one? Okay, too late now. You're going to have to make another pull request. <laughs> So yeah, I think, um, so thanks for, thanks to Ian for putting together our first use case, um, getting that across the line. So I'm looking forward to see how this kind of move forwards and hopefully we can have more standards around how we can improve things uh, going forwards. Okay, um, the next one is for people that missed it. Um, <laughs> There is the self nominations went out to the list on Friday. Um, so if you're looking to be either a co-chair or a tech lead, uh, the nomination period will end on Monday, March 8th. 
basically you need to uh, send a brief pitch, which includes your name, contact information, seat you're interested in, um, and basically a supporting statement for either the co-chair or the tech lead. Um, so just a reminder for anyone that's interested, um, please submit your self-nomination to the mailing list. Um, do tech leads do need to be a tech lead to a specific aim or are we just looking for people in general? So we do say like which part of the project you'd like to be a tech lead for. And so I think that's, that's talking about like what part of the project would you be most interested in rather than just in general? I don't think that ties you to one specific thing, but I, I think it'll help people understand what you're most interested in. Probably more part of the um, election um, part. So if you're saying I'm good at all tech, it's not gonna be as useful as I, I, I work on a lot of use cases and in this area and I'd really like to help drive the deployment use cases in or, or something like that. Or I'm familiar with Kubernetes specific networking and I want to help bridge the gap for the knowledge there or something. Okay, so we, we'll basically get the nominees and then we will sort of, rather than it being quite as clear as it might be, we'll try and work out what posts we want based on people's suggestions. Yeah. The idea would be, do we have people that represent different parts of the technology and other areas that we're wanting so that we can help drive those sections and have representation to help? The chairs are overall making sure um, we're moving forward with the um, higher level topics and, and people are getting um, their ideas across and whatever else. And then the, the tech leads are helping to make sure that we're going into enough details. If we're saying, do we know enough on a certain area to start adopting this as a sol solid set of use cases so that we can break it down? Or here's the best practice, have we covered enough in the areas? So to help, um, um, help with all that before a best practice is put forward. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm a little bit worried about this uh, specificity of uh, the tech leads, right? Which part of the project? We don't really have a comprehensive uh, list, right? We don't really have a scope of all the parts of this project and who would be applied to each. I, I kind of feel like at this stage, at least, it's probably best that the tech leads would be untitled beyond the fact that they're tech leads. Because um, we have people with a lot of different experiences in different realms. It's, um, it's not like so when you're nominated, yeah. I'm wondering whether we tie this back to what we were talking about earlier with who is, who do we draw our approvers for, for, you know, um, try and get things in within a handful of weeks. So you might argue that what we've got here is we want a list of approvers from which we draw tech leads and that would work better. <laughs> to me, this seems over elaborate at this point. <laughs> I think. Uh, well, well, it means that we don't have to choose our tech leads yet because we don't know what our areas are. But it, we we just basically put the approvers together, which we actually do need a bit more urgently. So you're you're basically defining the role of a tech lead as a commit approver. As a specialized approver of some variety, yes. You, you know, we'd expect them to specialize and then they would lead in a certain area once we've worked out what those areas are. But right now we just need them to sign up to be approvers that, you know, they, they're, they are gatekeepers and they give their attention to the backlog. I, I, I feel uncomfortable even with the word gatekeeper here. Um, I think everybody is a group here and even people who don't have time maybe to become tech leads would also like to be involved in and have a say. I think. I think as a whole, we're gatekeepers. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'm not suggesting that just because you don't have a title, you don't have a say. I'm saying that, um, you know, if we want to move things forward, then it has to be on somebody's head. 
that's that's the point of of having a core group of one variety or another if it's not going to serve a purpose then this is the wrong answer so so don't assume that i'm saying that this is absolutely the right thing to do i'm i'm asking what could we do that's going to help bill maybe you can clarify more what you mean by uh by tech leads what role you think they'll, they'll serve yeah, I think, I think those are the people in the community that we look to that have the deep technical knowledge in like to dive into things. And I, I think potentially how that could tie into our conversation um, from earlier is that like you'd need at least like like one approval from a tech lead and like a couple from like the community. And so like those are the people on the project that have like the time and expertise to dive into like is this um, like a, a really your best practice or not. Bill, it might help to pull up our, either our governance charter on tech leads or go all the way back to the TSC or SIG security or someone else where a lot of this was sourced. Here's a maybe more specific question that I asked last time. Um, so the the networking orchestration task force, is that a topic? Um, should I apply myself to be a tech lead for that if there will be pull requests for that area? I think that just when you're saying off the cuff, uh, I'm just off the top of my head right now, it's that sounds like a, an area that would be okay. Just saying, I have experience in if this case in network orchestration side and whatever else. And I think this would be a good area for us to make sure that we've covered and we can go into this. Like if you, uh, let's see, the wording here is a little bit harder. I like the TOC, it's a little bit more straightforward, but deep technical dive into an area. I'm gonna put a link in the chat, Bill. So they, that has the time and ability to perform deep technical dives on the project. So this is um, just a general SIG level and you can see them all slight variations on, on the different ones like SIG security and stuff versus SIGs, but it's the same idea. So what you're saying, Tal, could, in my mind could fit. So we're saying orchestration is important so what are some of the areas around that? And this is an area that you want to put some focus in right now. So that, that seems legitimate concern. I wouldn't say it's the lead of the task force. It would probably be um, tech lead for network orchestration, Kubernetes network orchestration. Right, task force is an informal name. <laughs> Well, the task force, I would just say that happens to be there. But if the task force went away, we would still care about network orchestration. So wherever it was done, it would be an area that we would want to cover. Um, well, I'll, I feel like I have to think about this. I, I um. Regarding network orchestration specifically, I kind of feel CNF working group is a temporary place for it uh, while we figure out better what we want to do. So for me, maybe committing to this role and responsibility here um, Anyway, I'm thinking out loud, but uh, <laughs> um, what do you guys think? Do you think it would be important to have a tech lead dealing with orchestration in the group? I, I think you need to use a more clear word than simply orchestration. Exactly. We've said, yeah. <laughs> we, we, we said more before that there's the orchestration of the CNF and the way the CNF uses the, whatever the platform provides to it. But the point about this is for this sort of thing, you need to be working holistically. You, you need to understand the consequences for the rest of this that isn't orchestration. So until we've kind of got through that process. That's one of the reasons why I think it doesn't make sense just yet to, to break that out into a separate group, because 
you know, if it went off and did its own thing, it would basically trample like a herd of elephants over all of the other bits of work that need to be done to, to paint a, a picture of an ecosystem altogether. If you see what I mean, it, it, you know, if I ask you how I start the CNF, then obviously you will talk to me about how it needs to plumb itself into the network and what implications that has. But what you don't necessarily get from that is there are 101 ways of doing that without respecting boundaries between CNFs. You know, I can just dive in and do dangerous things. And, and holistically, while that gets you past the orchestration problem, it doesn't take account of the other areas that it might affect. So that's the reason why I think this needs to be looked at with the viewpoint of actually, I don't much care about orchestration. I just care the whole system works before you start saying, here's the orchestration task we need to go off and fix. Sure, yeah, it, it's a big category. And as you know, I I very specifically want to focus on one specific area, right? The, the networking part. Mm -hmm. um, orchestrating CNFs as a whole and network services is a huge component too. <laughs> and, yeah. um, but, but I think it's separate, but, but I think I tend to agree with you. I think if we start right now delineating all the various uh, topics that we should have a tech lead. Um, that's basically defining the scope of what we're trying to achieve here. It's uh, equivalent. Um, Tal, we, I would refer back to the notes when we had the discussion about the task force and breaking it down into smaller parts and what could be more directly ap applicable right now in the CNF working group. And then just think about the areas where you think we need to cover and dive into. So what are areas that we're gonna miss in this group if we don't take some time in it? And if you think those are in an area that you want to um, contribute, then that would be where I would, you could put it forward and say, this is good, I'm already looking at it, I have a passion for this, and I'd like to help make sure that we, um, go deeply enough and, and look at enough options that we're making good informed decisions. Okay, okay, that, that makes a lot of sense to me. So I think we, we shouldn't treat the, the tech leads as some sort of a comprehensive, we're not picking a tech lead for everything necessary. It's just really people stepping up to lead specific issues uh, almost on an ad hoc basis, right? Yeah, and it could also, absolutely. So if you have a passion about something, it's better to do that than say, you're being assigned to this area that you don't like at all and don't think is important. So for sure that, and the other part in this is, we may have multiple tech leads in an area that are, you may be researching on one topic. Someone else may say, I am really wanna cover, uh, like Victor's been mentioning the um, multis and other things. If we're looking at current solutions and how does that go, go back? So go, we're going to dive into this. Well, there's going to be overlap. That's okay. Um, and how does it work? Do we vote on the tech leads or does the chair or? <laughs> Yeah, the process. So, yeah, so I can go over to um, the voting PR now. And so this is how it's, right? this is my first idea of how it could um, happen. Obviously, it is just one idea and I want this to be something that the community is happy with. This isn't saying this is how we're gonna be voting. So I see that there's a couple comments in here um, so the initial idea um, is to have organizational voting. So this came out of the Fluent D project, just so that people kind of have the background where each company or organization has one vote. Um, and you feel like this leads to unbalanced representation. Is he still here? Oh wait, did you ask something me? Yeah, I know, to Ian. Yeah. 
Oh, uh, but yeah, and, and I will say the same. What did you ask me? I didn't catch that. Ah, uh, sorry. Uh, you're not in favor of the organizational voting? Um, I am pointing out the problems with it. Um, I'm not sure I'm not in favor is quite where I go with that. But I mean, I don't think if you want to do it, then I don't think you've got enough detail. Okay. Right, if I turn up and someone else I don't agree with turns up from Cisco, who is your organizational voter? <laughs> Just to give you one example. Well, don't we already have that? Isn't there already a voting re member representative for, for each organization? And how is that decided? By your organization. I mean, there's a whole... Uh, my organization is 70,000 people, so... That's why you get into trouble with this. That's well, the problem. Who's the, who's the sponsor for your membership in CNCF? I uh, No one on the service provider side of the fence. Seriously? Yeah. So is that, was that Shane talking? Yes. Yeah. So you're saying um, the CNCF voting member. Right. I mean, that's, that's why you have a voting member is to avoid this issue. Well, the, the other thing, I mean, about this, aside from that, and I, I see the logic here, right? It means you can't be overwhelmed by numbers from a given organization. And I, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I think that's quite sensible. Um, but conversely, it seems to give a very peculiar power dynamic. Anybody who's from a, uh, a startup or an individual contributor who's not currently working for an involved company suddenly has equivalent power of any large company whose you know, lifeblood and day job is this. So it, it becomes a bit weird. Uh, and, and again, this is, unfortunately, it's criticism without an answer. I actually don't have an answer. I'm just saying why these are the problems we're going to face with it. How are we going to deal with them if they come up? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's the problem with most systems is there's always flaws in them. <laughs> so if you have a different proposal, I'm more than welcome to hear to listen to it. Um, but um, yeah, I, I need. I guess we need another proposal then, and then we can compare. Well, well, the, the the other proposal I would have is you get rid of the you ignore the organisation side of things, and instead you to deal with people individually, um, and you measure them by what they're doing, that they're doing something, that they're contributing. Contributing I, where? Commits where? discussions into this group and yeah or, okay then you allow one or again then you have the problem of you know yep yep let's go or red hat or whoever you know red hat has several people who are are contributing here should we be allowed to to vote more than once if you're doing work i would argue yes I mean, it sounds weird because I'm on the I'm on the I'm on the losing side here, but I mean, right? Because well, my my point is that gives you the exact opposite of the small company issue that you were referring to, right? Is that a large company could come in with ten people into a single working group and essentially take over? Or a yeah. hundred? They just say, okay, this is how much it'll cost us. Right. Exactly. That's what that I was. I was trying to say that Taylor without a. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and put it forward. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, though, for setting it up. Yeah. It, oh, okay. So one thing that we're going to have to do, this isn't going to be only freeform what we want. We want to be aligned with the TOC, CNCF TOC, and there are rules about that. So if, if we kept going forward, there's some type of representation and voting already aligned. So maybe that's yeah. something that we could go back to. I know on, on like, pro, if this was a project, it's even more clear where you can't make it into sandbox and, and on from there, unless you have a, a certain amount of representation split between orgs. Yeah. But there's something there's, similar on these. There's, there's also a prior example that we can use from groups like uh, Apache who they say for people who are voting members uh, or maintainers, that you can have no more than a certain percentage of the overall project. So it doesn't, 
It tries to minimize penalizing people, uh, companies who want to get heavily involved, but at the same time uh, also provides a, a limit on actual number of votes they, that they can provide. And the number I think is somewhere around 30, I think around 30%, but uh, you should double check to see what's, uh, what they do. And that might also be another good place to start. Yeah, I think this comes back to democracy is the worst form of government, except for all of the others. <laughs> yeah, there, there is there there is no uh, exact voting system uh, that will give us all the that will unearth all the intentions that we that we want as a, as a community. There, every single voting system has its problems. So uh, this actually comes down to. Um, is which one minimizes as much as possible some of the outliers while at the same time ensuring a legitimacy of, um, of, of, the, of the group. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a hard balance. You could simply go one vote per organization for the working group. So you take away the voting member issue and active members in the working group, each org gets one vote. Yeah, that's, that is possible as well. But the, then the question of it is like, should I get the same vote as as all of Red Hat and all of Cisco when they if they provide multiple people who contribute uh, a lot as well? So uh, we, we do want to be careful with that as well. Yeah. Um, so if anybody has a better idea of how we should do this, or they think they have a, uh, an idea of how we can make this more fair uh, to the community or create a better democracy, I would be very happy to hear it. Um, so this is, yeah. Well, probably it's, it's something related, but um, do we have a number of positions for tech leads or like uh, how many tech leads are going to consider for for this? Yeah, so right now there's not a limit on the number of check tech leads. This is similar on, if you go look at the TSC general rules or you go look at any of the other SIGs or working groups, tech leads are open. You, if people yeah. have an area that they're passionate about and they think needs to be researched, then step forward. Yeah, and I guess- Primarily to help make sure someone is there to help go, go deep down into an important area and you can rally around it. And chairs are the like top level moderator administrator to move the whole group forward. Yeah, I guess with this model, it's what I was trying to encourage is more people to get involved as tech leads. And so leave it as open and possible and not, not make it lower. I'm not, I guess maybe not lower the bar is the right word, but encourage participation from people as tech leads. So there's not a limit on that. And it's a not a really high requirements. So they just need to get 60% of the votes cast to be elected. So at this point, are we really, do we really wanna elect the tech leads or just have people sign up and if we see we have too many in one domain, then maybe then we need to elect. But it sounds like we may not have enough tech leads at the moment. So this conversation seems to be a bit moot. Yeah, we, we may have the exact opposite problem of not having enough people. And uh, then this type of conversation could be possibly postponed. Um, and, I, and I think the, the more important question is, is to make sure that we scope down the, the powers properly. Like we, we don't want uh, these people to be kingmakers. We want them to be uh, facilitators. And uh, this, this also means that we want that they, they should not be the in a role to basically squash things that are 
uh, that are not aligned with, with their company. And not that I would expect people to adhere to do that, but we have to take this type of things into consideration for the long-term health of the, of the project. So it, it becomes some, I, I think that there is something that we have to be a little bit careful with in terms of how much power we, we give these particular groups, but also make sure that the group has the correct set of antibodies that if we need to move on, we need to make a decision that something has been as, as uh, that there's a really hard decision has to be made that like, uh, it, how, how do we want to scope this thing, this particular, this particular path out? Like, how do we want to make sure that, that we can at least get some forward momentum without, uh, with, without giving one group the power to squash, uh, squash others? I think this actually might come back to our earlier discussion around what are the rules for approving and merging pull requests. So maybe once we have that, it'll become more clear uh, what each of the roles actually is able to do. Okay, I, uh, I know we're running out of time. So if people could like add more comments or if somebody has another idea of how we should do elections, please add this and then let's come back to this next week. Um, and maybe we can do the, this, some of the discussion asynchronously. Um, so next, I don't think, is Vuk on the call? No, so I haven't heard. I'll message him about the use case templates. Um, just to see if we have an update. Also, is anybody interested in helping creating a PR to define the different actors that we'll be speaking to? I know this one's been here, this issue has been open for a while, just so I just want to check back in. Okay. Um, and then Ian, do you want to, this is the, kind of the discussion from earlier. So, um, I guess maybe the discussion is, it's not a use case, it's not a best practice. So where does it fall exactly? It's, yeah, the, the, the way I see this is we have use cases that say what we want people to be able to do. We have best practices that say, this is our personal preference or you know, industry-wide recommendation for how it should be done, which might well be simply, you do this and it will cost you less to do or I, in many of these areas is obviously going to be, you do it this way because we need everybody to do it the same way in order to get the most benefit. But there's the bit in the middle, which is, I could do it this way. Is that a good idea? Can we write down our thoughts on this? It, you know, a design, requirements design implementation in some regards. So, you know, per that conversation earlier about Multus, right? So. Here are my use cases that describe how I'd like to use networking. Here's how Multus measures up to that. Um, maybe it's perfect, maybe it's imperfect, maybe it needs a ton of changes, maybe it's not the only thing you need. Uh, where do I put that down so that it's on record? We already have a docs directory and I, I think we could put any type of documentation that helps spring context um, into there, if nothing else. Um, if it's if you think there's additional context that's more specific to a use case, but it isn't required for the use case, you could put it in a the use case folder, like within yeah. within the subfolder of your use case in the in the use case folder. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, okay implementations where you want to get in and talk about like here's a here's a implementation that I'm wanting to talk about and maybe 
examine how it would work, then I would yeah. say boot those completely out. And my first suggestion would be the CNF test bed, which is, it was designed for that. So you could have three or four implementations of an idea using different multiplexers or using different um, transport protocols. Like we had some using MIF and different kernel interfaces and flat network and bridge networks. They're all the same top level idea of a use case, but implemented differently. And um, those are, we have it broken up. Like, is this kind of the workload infrastructure pieces or the main part was going into the use case folder there. And that it was designed for that. And then if we get down to a very, very specific best practice test, that's what the test suite, the CNF test suite is for. But I would say right now, those would be the two areas for code. And if you click on the use case, Bill, um, go into like that top one, 3C2N, three chains, two nodes. I think this one, yeah. So Michael from Intel, um, this is one that he helped build and you, you have the communication. What is this test case that was built, you know, around the use case idea and what is the actual implementation that was used? Talking about a more, this was a more specific area not a, a big, big use case, but in a very small set than what, what was a test case. And there was other test cases that implemented this in different ways. And you can see it talks all about it. How is it done? How do you actually test it? It used NFE bench to run and do the, the packet generation. You happen to be able to redeploy this yourself using the code. I mean, that was the idea with the CNF testbed but we have other ideas that came in here that were on like the Linux Foundation CSET lab, which were FD, the FDIO CSET lab. So there, there's actual use cases in here that were documented. I think the IPsec one would be one that was on both sides. One, there you go, yeah. Michael helped with this and also I think Peter and some other people from if anyone's familiar with some of the people on the FDIC said that was tested on both places. Okay. Um, I think the answer is we will need these. There is no point in giving them a place of their own just yet. They might get one in the future. It doesn't matter terribly much if they do or they don't. And we can attach them either to the user stories in the user story directory, or we can attach them in general in the docs to the docs directory. And if we decide to move them around in the future, we'll just do a bit of a rearrangement. Yeah. And we'll learn more by doing than worrying about it right now. Yeah. Okay. We have about two minutes left. Is there anything anyone else wants to bring up before we close for today? Okay. Thanks everyone for joining today. Cheers. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.